Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about arrowhead plant care. Arrowhead plants are some of my favorite plants of all time because they are so easy to care for, super low maintenance, but there are also a ton of unique and beautiful varieties to choose from. Honestly, I don't know why they don't get more credit. They are so underrated in the houseplant community. Why? Really quickly before we get into the video, please leave any additional care tips or information on this plant in the comments section. Also be sure to let me know if you found this video helpful by thumbsing it up or thumbsing it down if you didn't. So yeah, let's just get into it. First off, this plant is most commonly known as the arrowhead vine. The scientific name is Syngonium podophyllum. I think I'm saying that right, probably not. <laughs> But you may also see it labeled goosefoot vine, nephthitis, or African evergreen. So it goes by a lot of different names. As far as lighting goes, arrowhead plants do prefer bright indirect light or extremely dappled direct light, but they can also do very well in low to medium indirect light as well. The arrowhead plant varieties that I have in my collection have done really well on Eastern and Western facing windows pulled six-ish feet back from the window. So they get a few hours of very bright but indirect light Light. I also have a sheer white curtain in front of the window, so it's not too direct. It's very, very diffused light, and they really like that. So on the note of lighting, it does kind of depend on the variety. Green varieties can tolerate lower light conditions, whereas the variegated or colored varieties do need a bit more light to keep their coloration and do well. So just keep that in mind as you're picking a variety. If you start to notice any of these bleached looking leaves, that means that the plant is getting too much direct light, and you may want to move it back or to a different place in your house where it's going to get less sun exposure. As for watering, these guys aren't too finicky about the type of water you use. I've used just tap water on them for quite some time and they've done really well. I will note that they don't like extremely cold water, so try to let your water sit out to acclimate to room temperature before watering them if possible. It kind of sends them into shock if the temperature of the water is a bit too high or a bit too low, so just be wary of that. But they do prefer their soil to be almost completely dry between waterings. So what I've done is I'll just stick my finger as far down into the pot as I possibly can to see if the soil is dry or, or wet. Um, if it's dry as far as I can stick down in there, then I will go ahead and completely soak it. I also have found that these plants do very, very well with bottom watering. If you can bottom water these, they love it. If not, it's fine. Just uh, completely soak the soil really, really through. For soil type for these guys, I do recommend using a very airy soil mix, mostly because they are fairly susceptible to root rot and some signs of root rot are yellowing on the leaves or browning near the bottom of the stem or also if you notice your plant is drooping down but the soil is wet then that means it's been over watered and you may want to let the soil air out a little bit more between waterings. A trick that has done really well for me is I actually will water them and then I'll work the soil with a chopstick or something to help keep it aerated so that the soil isn't like crushing the roots and more airflow can get down there to them. So yeah just a little trick that I've used. I don't know if that's like a scientific thing. I don't know, it's worked for me. You will want to fertilize these plants during the warm growing seasons. So yeah, just go ahead and use a balanced fertilizer. I have my favorite one linked in the description box if you're interested in trying that. It's down there. Arrowhead plants do prefer wood bleh. Arrowhead plants do prefer a warm and humid environment, warm being 60 degrees and up. They don't tolerate cold temperatures or drafts very well, so be wary of that if you notice your plant not looking its happiest, that may be why. They do prefer a higher humidity, but they can tolerate lower humidity as well. I live in a state where it's about 40 degrees on average year round. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. They can tolerate that lower humidity level as well. The growth will just be slowed but your plant will be fine. Just if you want it to grow quickly, give it a bit more humidity. Arrowhead plants are some of my favorite to propagate because they propagate so, so easily. Basically, all you do is take a stem cutting. To up the chances of successful root growth, you will want to cut on a stem, try to find an air root and cut there if possible, just to up your odds of a successful propagation. They do very well in the water. It takes probably a month or two to get full root growth like what you're seeing on the screen now, but they do transition from water to soil very well and 
yeah, very easy way to get free plants. <laughs> you can definitely still propagate these in soil. I just don't have as much success with that in my home environment. So just kind of whatever you prefer, I suppose. So I thought I would show you the varieties that I have in my collection. Um, so the very first arrowhead plant I ever got was actually this white butterfly arrowhead. This one is actually a cutting from my grandmother's plant. So yeah, this was actually one of my very, very first plants. Look, it's getting a new leaf. Really cute little guy. Another variety I have in my collection is this red maroon one. I believe this one is called a Maria arrowhead. Um, it's really bright red. Wow, look at that new growth there. That's so pretty. It grows a little bit slower than my other arrowhead varieties, I have noticed. This is one that I do give a little bit more direct sunlight as opposed to the other green varieties I have, and it's done really well. It was a really, really small cutting when I got it. Yes, I really loved this one. So this next one is a Syngonium macrophyllum, I believe. It's actually unfurling a new leaf. I really love this one. The foliage is just so beautiful. I love all the veining and the texture on the leaves. This one is a little bit more difficult to come by though. So yeah, this one's a little bit more of an uncommon variety. Next up is my Syngonium variegata. Syngonium albo, albo variegatum. That leaf needs to be cut off. I don't know what's going on there, but the rest of it's happy. So I don't know what it's doing. A little uncommon. It's becoming more and more common recently. I'm seeing it pop up all over. The leaves are just all so unique. Look, there's an almost completely white one. That's really cool. This one I do also give a little bit brighter light exposure than a plain green variety, but this one water propagates so, so quickly and well. This one is my Syngonium aritium. Aritum. I'm just gonna say Aritum. This one has a really cool leaf shape. Yeah, it is yellowing a bit because I forgot to water it for a little while, so. <laughs> it's fine, it's getting new growth. I really, really love the foliage. This one is another really cool textured plant. It is a bit more uncommon, but you can definitely find it places, so. Another really popular variety is the Pink Syngonium. I love this one, it's really beautiful. It's a color unlike any other plant I have in my collection, so I definitely love it. Mine's kind of weird though. I don't know why, but like, look at the back of these leaves. Not all of them look like that. I don't know, they're kind of speckled back there. It's kind of weird, but this is a really easy one to care for. And this one is the one that I've had some issues with bleaching, but I've just cut off those leaves and moved it farther away to help stop that. So yeah, now it seems to be pretty happy, pretty healthy, kind of a small plant, but it's okay. I really, really, really love this one. And then the last arrowhead I have in my collection, I think I may have a few more floating around places that have left my mind for some reason, but this one is my confetti arrowhead. This one is definitely a bit more difficult to come by, but as you can see, it's green with little speckles of pink. I love it. A lot of the new growth is coming in just green, so I'm going to cut that back to help promote more of the variegated growth. And a lot of the small growth, new growth down here is still coming in speckled. So it's more of the growth up at the top that isn't as speckled that I'm going to cut off. Maybe propagate, see what happens with it. But yeah, this one is just my pride and joy. Top 10 favorite plants in my collection, no lie. I thought I would show you a few of the propagations I've taken from my arrowhead plants. Keep in mind, I do keep all of my arrowhead water propagations on a west facing wall. So this actually hangs on that wall right there. So in here I have three different varieties. Here's the pink one. She's got one giant root. It's kind of a small cutting, but the roots, wow. I should put this in water, but I'm just really enjoying it where it's hanging. So I'm gonna leave it there for as long as I can stand to. I have an one, two cuttings from my confetti arrowhead. Got some pretty good roots. I could probably pop these up, but like I said, I really like where they are on my wall. So I'm just gonna leave them there for a while. And then next up I have some, there's a dead leaf. It's fine. I have a ZZ and a Benjamina ficus in with this white butterfly one. Has some pretty good roots there. Just two leaf cuttings that I got off of my grandma's plant that I'm going to put in the same pot as those other ones I showed you before to help try and make it more bushy. Um, these plants do vine over time as they mature. It does take quite some time I found for them to vine, especially with certain varieties. But if you prefer a bushier plant like my confetti plant, you can go ahead and cut the vines and propagate them and then plant them back into the pot to get a bushier looking plant. So yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing with my white butterfly arrowhead as of now. Um, what are you? Some more confetti ones. That one has a dead leaf on it. 
I'm just gonna leave it because it has roots. So that's all that matters. Yeah, just a whole bunch in there really. I just kind of take cuttings. I get in a mood to propagate and I'll just go around and take so many different cuttings and shove them all in there together and kind of forget about them. Leave them in there for as long as I can. That's just my system. So please let me know in the comments section what you thought of this. If you have any other unique varieties of arrowhead, any that I should be on the lookout for, please let me know down there as well. Any additional care tips and info, really anything, leave a comment down below. So yeah, I think that that is everything. On that note, thank you so much for watching and I will see my next one. 